Imagine being whipped up into such an uncontrollable frenzy as to the result of a democratic election that you become convinced you're the one person on earth capable of intervening. Now imagine, if you will, this person as a barely known comedian and occasional host of a series of obscure television shows, with zero capital, zero influence and about as much political expertise as a mentally deranged Swede. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce your newest democratic candidate, Ben Glebe. Born Benjamin Gleberman, the West Coast comedian chose instead to abbreviate his name to Ben Glebe. I wonder why. Regardless, he would set himself up for a career in show business and specifically stand-up comedy, where the pudgy funny man would entertain tens of unresponsive walk-ins and self-indulgent open micers. I'm very excited to be here because I'm getting paid. <laughs> yeah, I am broke. I'm in debt actually, and I realize what sucks about being in debt is even a homeless man is much better off financially than I am. And following years of aimlessly circling the Los Angeles talent drain, Ben would receive his first real big break, hosting another of America's never-ending supply of generic quiz series with the game show network's Idiot Test. Well done, gentlemen. Amazing. Congratulations. You're getting emotional. And despite lukewarm ratings and a less than credible IMDb score, the show would somehow last four forgettable seasons, subjecting middle America to hour after hour of Ben's overly enthusiastic screeching. How did you get the job on Idiot Test? How did that all transpire? Um, I'd done a couple of things with Game Show Network over the years and they'd been looking for a show for me to host and they told me they were trying to find one and I didn't really believe it. You know, you always hear people in Hollywood saying that, oh, I want to find a show for you and then they actually did. A 2016 stand-up special titled Neurotic Gangster followed, with Amazon, home of pill-popping pasta man Joe Matteris, choosing to platform the pedestrian musings of Ben Glebe. For a while, Ben was just one of your average mild-mannered inoffensive Californian comics. He'd work on headshots, attend hopeless auditions and continue working on keeping that tight 15 as comedically accessible as possible. But following 2016's election of Donald J. Trump, the entire Golden State succumbed to an incurable bout of acute Trumpian psychosis. Keen to out-virtue his now deranged peers, Ben would gleefully hop right on that Trump-obsessed train. Oh, I thought this was America, so weird. <laughs> and then, yeah, so I shut her down. She, uh, she was heckling me, and because she wouldn't let me even speak about the president and said, you couldn't talk about the Donald, I decided to triple down and go very hard. And then this guy came up to me and he said, you're gonna get a bolt in the back of your head. I know a lot of people walking around here who have been shot with bullets, a lot of people carrying around here. You better watch yourself. Glebe was now practically inundated with hours of Trump-hating material and simply couldn't wait to share his all-encompassing hatred of all things orange with his few remaining followers. Trumpet, President Rump. Rump shaker, I wish someone would shake some sense into your golden hair and your orange face. You're like an orange with hair upon its head. You're, you are the annoying orange. You're the, you're the original annoying orange. My fellow Americans, okay, I'm coming to you from the Oval Office tonight, something reserved only for very solemn occasions to give you the breaking news that I want a wall, okay? I want a wall really bad, okay? A lot of drugs are pouring into our country, huge amounts of drugs. Now, people will tell you those drugs are coming in through official ports of entry, not where a wall would be. And to that, I say, la, 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 la. And if you go like this to your ears, you don't hear certain things, and then you still need a wall. But it was another hosting opportunity Ben would graciously receive that would trigger his jet black pompadour into a spiraling fit. He would host something called Telethon for America, an effort at securing a midterm election win leaning on a handful of Hollywood's fanatical brigade of privileged white women to attempt to enact political change. It's the 2018 Telethon for America, powered by When We All Vote, with appearances from Charlize Theron, Chelsea Handler, Amy Schumer, Jane Fonda, Natalie Portman, and many more. Now please welcome your hosts for the evening, Olivia Munn and Ben Glebe. Hello and What's welcome to the first ever Telethon for America. 
Powered by when we all vote. However, the event would be best remembered for Ben's eager yet inappropriate manhandling of female participants and total lack of respect for personal boundaries. Not very strong boundaries over here. Having now been directly involved in what he would consider political activism, Ben's grandiose delusions would quickly take hold. He would spend the next few months in an incessant feedback loop of Trump tweeting and the relentless posting of excitable rants to Facebook and Instagram. Such was his froth-mouthed frenzy towards Donald Trump at this point, that something inside finally snapped. It was clear Ben had lost his final grip to reality, as an announcement promised a new political project. On May 13th, 2019, Ben Glebe announced his candidacy for President of the United States. We need someone who can shred Trump like a stand-up takes down a heckler, because Trump is a heckler. And to fight him, we need a comedian. Donald Trump is the greatest risk to our nation, but also the best trash talker in political history. I am not a politician or a greedy millionaire, or billionaire, but I've dealt with narcissistic, crybaby hecklers like Trump hundreds of times before, and I've never been defeated. Let's take our democracy back. The threshold to qualify for the Democratic debates is just 65,000 donations. Even just $1 from you and 64,999 of your closest friends will put a regular person on that debate stage. Will the powers that be allow a different voice in the conversation? Let's find out together. Visit Glebe2020.com and donate. Together, we can take the crybaby down. The announcement was greeted with a total and utter lack of social media interaction, but a newly fixated Ben would simply not be deterred. A campaign kickoff speech would outline the key ingredients to Ben Glebe's candidacy, namely in the literal form of being a comedian. All our joke of a president can do is talk about himself. Witch hunt, no collusion. No one thanked me for the funeral I threw for an American hero. I'm the best, really it's true, me, me, me. Shut up, you immature racist monster. And to all the news networks and the powers that be that think a comedian shouldn't be taken seriously, look at history. Look at Dick Gregory's run for the presidency, who got a million votes running against Nixon. Look at how he marched side by side with Martin Luther King Jr. Comedians are the real journalists these days, and you are not, so step up your game. Trump is trying to weaponize his supporters to squelch free speech. And instead of letting him win, instead of saying, I won't tell those jokes anymore, I'll quiet down, I decided to go the other way and run for president of the United States of America. An appearance on Chunk Yogurt's The Fat Turks would see the socialist pig categorically fawn over Ben's catalogue of barely workable ideas. Let's talk about the rest of the media for a second, then I'm gonna go to your policies. Because uh, there's one in particular that I love, sure, okay? Thanks. And then I think that everybody's gonna love. Sure. Um, so, uh, is I, I get it, they're probably thinking like, well look, your job is to not be taken seriously, like literally, right? So, do they know that you're running a serious campaign? And and have how have they responded to you? The mainstream media? Yeah. They we're telling them that we're running a serious campaign. They are not taking it seriously. It's very frustrating. Meanwhile, Gleberman would seem to accept literally any opportunity to address a crowd, no matter how small or patently ridiculous. This resulted in one particular campaign event in what appears to be somebody's living room, drawing unflattering yet accurate comparisons to the Oathy Schwering show. And everybody agrees that beating Trump has to be our number one goal this time. And yet, we keep only considering the same old formula. What if we lose again? How are you gonna feel on November 6th or November 7th when the votes are tallied and Trump wins again? Such was his seriousness towards the campaign that Ben would even hire a team of wide-eyed volunteer activists, seemingly unaware of the comedic absurdity of their situation, and subsequently rent out what he would generously call his campaign headquarters. We are here in our campaign office doing phone banking today. I wanted to introduce you to everybody. Look at our volunteers, amazing wow. people. Uh, you know, I, I don't have to be an expert to know, but uh, you know, even uh, the campaign office in Taxi Driver had a few more people than this. One, two, three, four, five. Five people 
in zip up hoodies from Target. There is a piano in the room. Okay, this is leading me. There is an old wooden piano in the room letting me believe this could be the back of some improv studio, some improv space, right? How ironic would that be for the campaign headquarters to be ran out of an improv theater? <laughs> Yikes. It wasn't long before the desperation of Ben's political aspirations became apparent. In fact, such was his insatiable hunger for support that he even tried to brazenly co-opt the LGBT community in a move so fragrantly transparent even Hillary would think twice. I almost wore this today. Really? Yes. I'm running for president. We're out here. Got my bow. Got my bow. Love is love. Love is love, man. Without doubt, the primary concern facing Ben Glebe at this stage was in his total inability to compete on any sort of financial level. In fact, a phone call to public records on July the 1st, two months after his presidential declaration, showed Ben may have not even raised the $5,000 required to file a financial statement to the Federal Election Committee. I went on the, uh, the FEC website. They have his name and his campaign, but they say there's no data on him. Okay, I probably means he has to file financial statements, yeah. Well, he's taking donations. Is that, is that right? Is that right? Well, he has to raise, he has to raise or spend $5,000 before he has to, this is required to file. Okay, so if there is no data, that means he hasn't raised $5,000 yet? Right, yeah, usually that means because he hasn't filed his, his report, his financial report yet. Okay, so it's safe to say that he hasn't raised that amount of money yet? Because I think uh, he tweeted... That's correct. Financial records revealed later in the campaign would show Ben as having only $17,000 available in cash on hand, with $9,000 contributed towards the campaign from Ben's own pockets. This overwhelming lack of financial support would present a serious visibility problem for Ben, with the comedian falling significantly short of the 65,000 individual donations needed to join the televised presidential debates. He needs 65,000 individual donations in order to qualify for the Democratic debates, the first round of debates. So not $65,000, 65,000 different people need to donate donations, minimum $1. So we said, what are you talking about, Ben? Are you out of your mind? That's never going to happen. And it never did happen, everybody. Uh, the time came and went. He did not qualify but instead of acknowledging the need for a sensible debate threshold given the size of the televisual platform, he would see this as a conspiracy against the little guy. Ben's feeling seems to be that all in his path are for some reason obliged to take him and his campaign seriously without providing any real reason why. I'm running for president because I think I can make a difference. I think I can help. I can bring some common sense back to our country, and I can call people out using my skills as a comedian when they need to be called out for standing in the way of that progress. And I will find ways for all of us to work together, only those who truly want to. If you don't, get out of our damn way. His candidacy would continue to be seen as something of a light-hearted joke, with Glee reduced to scraps of Midwestern local programming for literally any coverage whatsoever. This week in Iowa would showcase Ben at his hyperphrenetic worst, with his signature delivery of high-pitched whining wrapped in piercing layers of nervous anxiety. He's the most self-interested, corrupt, treasonous, lying, greedy human being I've ever seen, let alone politician, let alone leader, let alone president of the greatest nation on earth. And it's a complete mismatch. And it's disgusting that he's our president and he has to be stopped at all costs. We're not being strategic as a Democratic Party in stopping him. We don't have any actual unique approach other than my campaign to stop him, to combat somebody with unique political skills in a way that only I as a comedian and a trash talking comedian at that can do. But his look would soon change, with the Iowa Federation of Labor charitably granting Ben a seat at the big boys' table. He was to speak alongside other Democratic candidates in AFL-CIO's annual convention. And even a clear snub from the shriveled carcass of Bernie Sanders would do little to spoil the occasion. Okay. Okay. Supported you your, your Senate campaign when you first ran. Oh my gosh. And now I'm running against you. That's all right. That's all right. It's good. Donald Trump is not a politician. So you can't beat him with politics. 
He's the biggest heckler in history. And to beat a heckler, we need a comedian. And if you don't think I'm right, just remember the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Because Obama hit him so hard with jokes, that's why he ran in the first place. Comedy got us into this mess. Comedy can get us out. They, he's awoken them. Shit. Um, wait a minute. Maybe we... Hey! Hey, wake up, Earl! This guy's... Hey, this is what I'm talking about. But despite Ben's fleeting victory, this was simply one of hundreds of events the actual democratic field would participate in. And in the grand scheme of things, the speech would represent a blip in an otherwise uninspiring campaign. It wasn't long before reality would hit the comedian square in his increasingly rounded face. A successful attempt by Ben to rudely interrupt an ongoing interview with fellow presidential candidate Amy Klobuchar had cameramen and sound engineers shutting off equipment the minute he spoke. I'm truly so sorry to interrupt, but the media won't cover our campaign, and so I have to say you should cover all voices because we are the 20th highest fundraising Democratic campaign, Ben Glead for president, and they won't cover us because you guys already want to be decided who gets the coverage. You want to decide who gets to be taken legitimately. Well, we have to take into account strategy to beat Donald Trump, and the only way we're going to actually beat Donald Trump is not by running a career politician. Oh my God! <laughs> He jumps in to this other woman being interviewed and he goes, I'm truly so sorry to interrupt, but the media won't cover our campaign because it's fucking nonsense. <laughs> She's having an interview with the press. Ben has just decided, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck the rules. I'm breaking in. <laughs> they're all unplugging the devices. They're taking their headphones off. They're shutting things down. <laughs> this is insane and even his comedic peers would offer no respite for the lisping fool, with Joe Rogan appearing to be making fun of Ben with Gas Digital's Legion of Skanks. Ben's response was to attempt to force himself and his campaign onto the Joe Rogan experience in yet another act of self-indulgent desperation. Whoa, they're trying to figure out who's gonna be. Ben who's Glebe. Maybe. Imagine, <laughs> imagine we all get doubted him. <laughs> if, uh, <laughs> he gets through and becomes president, we'll be fucked. And with that, Ben and his ill-fated campaign had become an instant inside joke to the comedic community. Who, who are you rooting for right now? God, there's so many of them running right now. Uh, ben Glebe. Who? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, he's a comedian who's, uh. who's running. Angered by Rogan's ridicule and exhausted by months of futility, Ben took to Instagram to vent his frustrations. His rant would have him first attack Rogan and his fellow comedians for not supporting his candidacy, before claiming he's ready for some controversial crazy shit. There's a touch of self-destructiveness where I'm like, yes, I could just focus the next two hours and get that next video done and finish the subtitles, but I sh if a presidential candidate shouldn't have to do his own subtitles either you know what I mean a day after I posted a Joe Rogan video calling him out for talking shit to me and you know somebody who's been friendly with for many years over a decade and then doesn't even give me the light of day on his podcast when he has like all kinds of people on it and people are criticized oh you didn't have to have you on bro what are you complaining about but when you don't do controversial posts when you just post heartfelt shit about people trying to turn their lives around it gets like four comments just frustrating because clearly you want controversy and clearly you want crazy shit and I do too I want to be bold and I am as bold as I can be but then your voice is always trying to modulate you what he's saying here is I've been heartfelt I've been sincere but that ain't working people want controversy so you know what you want controversy you got it yeah. I'm going crazy now I'm reloading <laughs> Ben's newly staged insanity began with him claiming to have been arrested for staging a protest outside the US Capitol building. However, at no point does it appear that Ben was actually arrested. This prompted claims that he had grossly exaggerated the incident in an attempt at political clickbait. We peacefully protested at the US Capitol to get our corruption out of our government and protect our right to vote. We were arrested. We must stand firm for our democracy because we are running out of time and corruption is at the root of every crisis we face. So look at that, they're like, sir, get out of here. And they just hold his arms, but he's going, one arrest, Am I, is this an arrest? <laughs> Not an arrest, they're literally moving. You can see him, he's the only guy in white. They're moving the man. Oh, Bengley puts, oh, this is sick. This is what he was talking about. So Bengley was just 
And now the cop's going, can you please move here? And Ben is going like this the whole time. There are no cuffs on him. The cop did not say, put your hands behind your back. And there are no zip ties. He's walking like this, so it looks like a perp walk, like he's been detained. But by far the most outlandish of political stunts was yet to come. Tommy Loren, a friend of Glebe's and conservative political commentator on Fox News, invited Ben to a panel to discuss his views on guns, race, and Donald Trump. It is not just the immigration policies of this administration that are what label him as a racist, or what label people who support those policies as supporting a racist. It is everything this president does that is, by definition, racist. But as debate descended into yet another of Ben's sanctimonious rants asserting virtue, the rest of the panel took to mercilessly mocking the so-called comedian. What followed was a scene closer resembling some sort of Tim Heidecker parody than an actual televised event. A now manic Glebe stood ranting and raving before tearing off his microphone and storming off the Fox News set. Virtue received. But what we cannot have a debate on is morals and compassion and empathy for our fellow human beings. We cannot have a debate on finding some way we can all give a little bit with comprehensive care for each other, something to give for our own citizens so we don't have children okay. being slaughtered right. in schools. Okay, no, we don't no, have guys. children put no, in cages. Right. So we don't have actually, black people ben, being, ben. being wow. attacked and being discriminated ah! against in America. It's ridiculous. Virtue when signal are we received. actually going, signal, yeah. when are we signal actually going we to it. care about people? We're going to go we to got the wrap virtue signal. We got Enough of people not caring. It's honestly, it's bullshit. He's an actor, right? For people in this country that are your fellow brothers and sisters. All right. Sure to win the election. Ben's campaign is now in turmoil. His comedic reputation in complete disarray. He has willingly parted with thousands of his own dollars in hopes that, best case scenario, this campaign might boost an otherwise meager profile to that of celebrity. But he has in fact achieved the polar opposite. Now a laughing stock in the far reaches of obscurity, begging for donations to a lost cause. As of this documentary's release, Ben Glebe is still an official Democratic candidate for President of the United States. But exactly why is anybody's guess.